Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica, the Ferrari Family Coach. If you are returning to my channel, thank you so much. If you are new to my channel, I'm a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. Thank you so much for being here and I hope you consider subscribing. In this video, we are gonna be talking about preparing for emergencies with your pets. And I'm gonna talk about, I'm not gonna be terribly specific as to what kind of emergency. It could be an emergency where you have to evacuate could be an emergency where you are quarantined. I know right now in the United States and across the world, everyone is incredibly concerned about coronavirus. And I have to say that while I am concerned about it, I know my family and I are prepared and I'm not, I'm not as concerned about contracting coronavirus, I think because I'm not really in a high risk demographic. Um, whereas if you are in a high risk demographic, you may be more concerned about actually contracting coronavirus and that's totally understandable and I'm gonna talk about that as well. I'm more concerned about a potential quarantine and we have seen this happen in multiple countries now and we've actually seen it happen, We've We've seen a recommended self-quarantine happen in a county in New York in the United States so far. So that's what really triggered this video for me because I think when I first started thinking about preparing and if I should do a video, if I shouldn't do a video, um, I was like, well, you know, the United States, I'm not sure if we're gonna quarantine because so f up until earlier this week, it really hadn't been, it, it was on my mind. I kind of thought in the back of my brain, and maybe I shouldn't have, that, well, you know, I don't feel like our country would actually go through a quarantine situation. But historically, you know, things have happened and the, the coronavirus, according to virologists and I believe the CDC, are comparing it to the Spanish flu of, I think, the 1920s and 30s or maybe 20s. So, you know, we do have some things to look back at on and we know that other countries have done mass quarantines. China and Italy, for example, have done mass quarantines. So it is something that I, I want to prepare me and my husband for, but I really want to think about what I'm doing for my pets and what I would need if I couldn't leave my home. Um, so let's get right into this video. And at any time during the video, if you like this content, please do give it a big thumbs up. It will help my channel grow. And I would really appreciate that. And also at any point through the video, if you have any questions or concerns, please post them in the comments below. I would love to hear uh, your comment and answer any questions that you may have. So let's get started. I'm going to throw in some footage along the way of uh, things in my home that I've actually done and prepared for. The first thing that is recommended is having one of those little rescue stickers. I don't actually have one and I needed to get one. So I'll, sh I'll insert a picture of one here um, that you put either on like a glass or a window or somewhere on or around your front door. And what this is designed to do is let rescuers know how many and what type of pets you have in the home. And then if you do evacuate, if you are in an, in an emergency situation where you have evacuated and you have taken your pets, which you should 100% of the time, if it's not safe for you to stay in your home, it's not safe for your pets to stay in your home. So definitely if you have to evacuate, take your pets with you and write on the sticker that you have evacuated so that rescuers, when they get to your house, know that there are no animals that they need to be searching for in the home. So my husband tells me I play with my hair way too much in videos, so I'm gonna try really hard not to. <laughs> The second thing you want to do is make a plan and you need multiple plans depending on what could happen. Maybe you are planning for a potential evacuation. You need a plan on where you and your pets can safely go together in multiple directions. Maybe you'll be able to go north. Maybe you'll be able to go south. Plan out where you would go, where you would like to go and find places along the way, whether that is shelters or hotels that do take pets. More and more shelters are starting to take pets because they realize that people are not evacuating because they can't take their pets. So do your research ahead of time and make sure you have planned routes in multiple directions if you have to evacuate where you can take your pets with you. If you're planning for a quarantine situation, then you want to plan and make sure you have enough supplies on hand 
if you are in fact quarantined in your home. And you should plan for any event or situation in where you may be sick or injured and maybe hospitalized and away from your home. So you want to have a plan in place where you have a caregiver who can come to your home and either take your pet to their home to take care of them or continue to come into your home and take care of your pets. So you want to have multiple different plans for multiple different scenarios that could potentially happen. And they're all emergency situations. They're just different types of emergency situations. It's also a good time to check your emergency kits and make sure nothing is expired, that you don't need to replace anything. If anything is expired or if you have used something, then you want to go ahead and replace it. So check all of your emergency kit kits and supplies. And some of those supplies are going to be things like making sure you have collars and tags for all of your pets and the tags are updated with current information. And if you have microchips, which the ASPCA recommends you have, that the microchip information is also updated. Have carriers and leashes for all of your pets. Don't be short a carrier. If you have three cats, then you need three carriers. Make sure you have at least two leashes for all of your dogs so that if one of them snaps or breaks in an emergency situation, you have a backup. Make sure you have copies of all of your pet's medical records. One of the things I'm doing this year is going paperless. I will continue. There are some things that you need to keep paper copies of. So I will continue to have paper copies of my pet's medical records, but I'm also going to have a digital copy of them so that if I can't or don't have access to the paper copies, I'll have access to a digital copy. But if I don't have access to electricity or the internet, I will still have the paper copies. It's also a good time to make sure that your first aid kit is fully stocked with all of the supplies that you would need. And I actually have another video on my channel. I will link it below um, where I went through and I restocked my first aid kit, specifically the first aid kit for my pets. Um, so if you would like for me to do a new video about stocking a first aid kit for your pets, please do post in the comments and let me know that you'd like to see a new video on that and any medications that you and your pets may need. Now, my pets don't actually need medications that I would get from a pharmacy, but there are things that I do use for my pets, and I want to make sure I have plenty of them on hand, like Cat Calm from the Two Crazy Cat Ladies, Kitty Boost from Animalio, Sunshine in a Bottle from Animalio, and I probably have like 30 or 40 other things from Animalio, but there are certain ones that I do want to make sure I have plenty of because if I get sick, for example, I want to have a good supply of open air, which I just ordered, and I want to have a good supply of citrus clean, so I have plenty of natural cleaners that are going to disinfect and clean my home well in, in the event that I do get sick or one of my pets gets sick. Uh, which leads me into cleaning supplies. So I try really hard not to use chemicals in my home for the health of me and my family, but also for the health of my pets. So I do like to use natural cleaners. So I want to stock up on those things. Also poop bags, cat litter, litter trays in case you need to evacuate. You might want to have some smaller or disposable litter trays, paper towels and towels. So for your pets specifically, you're going to want to have access to paper towels and towels to help make things easier if you do have to clean anything up. If you have to evacuate, you do want to have all of the things that your pet would normally have and use on a daily basis. So go around and think about the things that you're using regularly, like grooming supplies. Make sure you have a, a go bag ready with, you know, an extra brush for your dog, toys, uh, catnip. If your cats love catnip, try to keep things as normal as possible, no matter what the situation is for your pets. You do want to have current pictures on hand of all of your pets and in today's digital age, I think we probably all do, but you may actually want to print some out in the in the event that you don't have access to the internet or electricity. Of course, you always want to stock up on water and we actually stock up on two different kinds of water. We have waters that maybe we've had for a while. We bought maybe the last time we stocked up and those are going to be good for like bathing or if we just need to wash our hands and then of course you want to have good clean drinking water plenty for you and your pets and i saved this one for last it's food so of course you want to have plenty of food for you and your pets in this video we're specifically talking about our pets now i prefer to raw feed my pets and 
for me, I happen to be in a situation where I do not have a lot of freezer space. I really need to buy a second freezer, but I, in our current living situation, we don't have the room for another freezer. So we tend to live with very minimal amount of food for our pets because I buy it regularly. I tend to go out every month or so and restock and replenish their food because it's all I have room for in the freezer. Now, if you are a raw feeder and you have plenty of freezer space, maybe you have two or three freezers, go girl or go guy, <laughs> whoever you happen to be watching this, like props for you. I personally do not have the freezer space, go ahead and stack up. And I like to say, don't don't buy things that you're not going to use normally during the course of a normal day or week or month. Buy the things that you would normally use and would normally feed to your pets. That way, you can just rotate through any additional stock that you purchase. Now, for me, I don't have the freezer space. So I wanted to bring one solution to you guys out there who also may not have freezer space like me. What I have researched and found are these products from Food for Life. They're called Easy Complete. They have a premix for dogs and they have a premix for cats. And these make mealtime super easy because all you have to do, you can actually mix these either with raw meat or cooked meat. So maybe you have a really good supply of meat in the freezer, but you don't have all of the other things that your dog or cat would need to balance out their diet. And so these make it really easy. All you do is follow the, the directions for how much to use uh, per pound of meat that you're making. And what you do is take the meat and add in this premix and it completely balances the meal for your pet. So um, for me, again, you know, if, if you have plenty of freezer space and maybe you have a ton of meat for your pets, but then you add in fresh fruits and vegetables and seeds and different things that maybe you don't have enough room or stock for to balance diets for your pets over an extended period of time, um, something like this would be really good to have on hand because it just takes the just the meat and completely balances the rest of the diet. So you can actually feed a balanced diet and know that your dog or cat are getting all of the nutrients they need, even though all you have on hand is meat and this premix. So I'll put a link below. I do, this is not an affiliate link. I am not affiliated with this company. This is just a product that I have personally used in the past and I find it to be really easy and convenient and good for, I mean, it's, it's something that you could potentially feed throughout the year to your pet, but I think it's especially good for emergency situations. And then if you're like me and you don't have the freezer space to actually stock up on meats that you would need for this premix, what I have found, there are lots of different canned meats out there, but the majority of them, one, don't have um, a long shelf life because of different reasons that I won't go to in this video. Um, but a lot of them also have additives and preservatives in them, and I don't want that. I want just plain meat. So what I have found are these meats and you can get them in beef, chicken, turkey, and pork. And there's also a ground beef option, but so I'm, let's just say beef, chicken, turkey, and pork. And what I really like about these and full disclosure, <laughs> this is actually my husband's company, but what I really like about these is that they have a really long shelf life. So there is um, a code on the bottom telling you when it was manufactured. So they have a really long shelf life and there are no added, they're all natural, no additives, no preservatives. The one thing I will say, and you do want to be um, aware of if you have an animal that has any dietary um, issues with salt. 
So there is a small amount of salt added, but it's not a huge amount of salt. Like it's not a preservative amount of salt. It's just enough that it actually tenderizes the meat as it cooks. So it's a pretty small amount, but you do wanna be aware that um, there will be a little bit of added sodium in whatever you're feeding your pet. So you wanna offset that if necessary. If you have a pet who has um, any issues, especially we're talking about our cats especially, we want to be very careful with this, the amount of sodium we're feeding them. So um, just so you know that this is a, uh, all made in the USA. All of the animals are raised in the USA and um, all humanely processed. So this is, for me, a really good um, emergency supply because I don't have enough freezer space to be able to stock all of the food that I would need for my pets. So um, just to recap, prepare, have a plan. No matter what emergency situation you are planning for, maybe you live in Tornado Alley, or maybe you are worried about earthquakes, or maybe you're worried about hurricanes, or maybe you're worried about solar flares, or maybe you're worried about, I don't even know, there's so many things to be worried about, but have a plan. That's the number one thing. Have a plan and everyone in your house should know the plan and be on board with the plan um, and plan for multiple different situations. So for me, this is one of the things I'm doing and I just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, I'm not making any money off of this, but I did get a discount code if you do want to buy and stock up on these meats. Of course, we have enough of them for um, our family and our pets. And of course, you know, these go along with it for our pets, but I do have a discount code if you do want to purchase any of these, whether it's for you or your pets or both, um, go to, it's, you just go to survivalcavefood.com and enter the code, uh, the promo code at checkout, pet parent. So I'll put that in the description and on the screen. So go to survivalcavefood.com. You'll save 15% off of your entire order with code pet parent parent. Um, so yeah, with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Again, I, I don't make money on any of these things. Like these are not affiliate links. These are just things that I'm personally doing in my home with my pets. And I wanted to share with you guys. So if you have any questions or concerns, please do post them below in the comments and, uh, make sure you give this video a thumbs up to help my channel grow. I would really appreciate it. And if you like this video, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.